Greetings from California. My name is Ken Chang, and I'd like to thank Professor Mora for inviting me to give a lecture entitled Transoral Incisionless Fundoplication, or TIF for GERD, Moving Towards the Optimal GE Flap Valve. These are my conflicts of interest. We are all well aware of the two anatomic structures that are part of the anti-reflux anatomy, including the right cruise of the diaphragm, as well as the lower esophageal sphincter, which also includes the gastric sling fibers. However, we should keep in mind a third physiologic component, which is the GE flap valve. And this GE flap valve is very important as we think about anti-reflux procedures and surgeries. Here on the right side, you can see a loose GE flap valve. This would be considered a hill grade two, where the sling fibers are loose around the scope. On the left is a normal GE flap valve. Uh, this uh, bulky lip area is made up of the sling fibers of the stomach, which is part of the lower esophageal sphincter construct. So our goal is to restore or reconstruct the right-hand side to look and function like the left-hand side. And that is what we can accomplish with the TIF procedure. In letter A, you can see the endoscopically guided TIF device in position. In letter B and C, you can see the completed valve, which is 3 to 4 centimeters in length and 270 to 320 degrees in wrap. And on the bottom left, you can see the completed TIF valve. While there are dozens of published data on the TIF device, I just want to summarize and call your attention to the level one medical evidence, which includes the European sham trial, the RESPECT multicenter randomized single blind control trial, as well as the TEMPO multicenter randomized open label controlled trial. In summary, the RESPECT trial showed that troublesome regurgitation was eliminated in 72% of TIF patients at over one year with 72% of TIF patients off PPI at interval greater than one year. The TEMPO trial showed that troublesome regurgitation was eliminated in 88% at one year, 90% at three years, and 86% at five years, and patients remained off of PPI medications 83% at one year, 73% at three years, and 64% at five years. Now I'd like to go into greater detail regarding the factors that influence flow from the stomach into the esophagus as we think about the optimal flap valve. Number one is diameter. On the left-hand side, you can see the open and non-existent flap valve, and this diameter is wide. On the right-hand side, the optimal flap valve has a more narrow lumen, so that has to do with the diameter. The second factor influencing flow is the length of the flap valve, especially the intra-abdominal length. The third factor is the medial to lateral movement of the flap valve. And the fourth is or the orientation of the flap valve from the greater curve towards the lesser curve. And I'll explain these in a little bit more detail. In this picture, you can see the GE flap valve is quite flat so it does not have length, and the sling fibers of the stomach are loose, and this creates uh, a shallow angle of hiss, as you can see here. After creation of the TIF valve, you can see now the length of the flap valve is quite long, uh, the diameter is smaller, and it is a floppy valve, flopping from greater curve towards the lesser curve. So this medial to lateral movement of the flap valve is important. This is the normal flap valve. This is the loose flap valve. This is the reconstructed TIF flap valve. And the normal flap valve functions by closing from the greater curve towards the lesser curve in this direction. So the normal flap valve, of course, without the scope in place, will move and close from the greater curve towards the lesser curve. Now, this is the same direction as the TIF valve, which will close from the greater curve towards that lesser curve. We call the lesser curve the backstop, and the swing of the flat valve is from greater curve to lesser curve, from medial to lateral. And the GE flat valve 
moves in synchrony with the right cruise. This white cable represents the right cruise, which acts as a sling or noose around the G-junction. And when this muscle contracts, it pulls the G-junction to the right and posterior and inferiorly in a direction which is from medial to lateral in this direction. This is the same direction as the flat valve, which we've talked about. And the two are moving in synchrony. So here is the flat valve uh, reconstructed using the TIFF device. And I will orient it uh, in the proper orientation and just bring it over to the smaller diagram. So you can see now, this is the flat valve in its proper position. And the movement of the flat valve seen in red is from medial to lateral, from greater curve to lesser curve, and it's moving in the same direction and in synchrony with the right cruise. And it makes sense to me that physiologically, the flat valve and the cruise are moving in synchrony and not in opposing directions. And finally, the optimal flat valve needs to have durability. Uh, this is a TIF valve one month after the procedure. You can see the nice length. Uh, and the diameter and the swing from greater curve to lesser curve. Here we are, same patient, one year post-TIF. You can see the valve still quite durable. Uh, this is the same patient, two years after TIF, the valve is still quite durable. Three years after TIF, and here five years after TIF, and the valve is still quite durable. So when I consider the current and expanding indications for TIF, uh, I would start by saying that the general GERD population whose anatomy are appropriate for TIF, meaning they have a Hill grade one or two flat valve, these patients are ideal for the TIF procedure. The expanding indications for TIF include patients who have had Barrett's, who are post ablation or post EMR, and have reached CRIM. These patients do not want to stay on lifelong PPI, and they may be excellent candidates for the TIF procedure. TIF can be used for post poem GERD, and in my experience, in the small percentage of patients who have post poem GERD that are refractory to PPI, the TIF is an excellent anti-reflux procedure in this subpopulation. We have also performed TIF in conjunction with endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty in patients with obesity and GERD. In patients after a sleeve gastrectomy with GERD, TIF is possible if the sleeve is wide enough the other strategy, of course, is to consider doing the TIF prior to sleeve gastrectomy. Scleroderma patients have very poor motility and can suffer from GERD, and TIF can be a great option for these patients. In younger patients, say patients in their 30s and 40s, doing a fundal plication using TIF may be a better strategy because 10, 20, 30 years from now, they may need a redo fundal plication and with TIF, you don't have to take anything down in order to tighten or redo the fundal application. In patients who've had a successful fundal application in the past, but now years later, the fundal application has become loose, TIF is a great way to reconstruct or reinforce the prior fundal application without the need for a takedown. And the fastest growing indication for TIF is what we call C-TIF, which is the concomitant laparoscopic hernia repair plus TIF. And now I'd like to share with you a case demonstration. A 64-year-old female with severe chest spasm and dysphagia on manometry showed distal esophageal spasm and hypertensive LES. A peroral endoscopic myotomy was performed on 4-23-19. post -poem, she has dramatic relief of spasm and dysphagia symptoms, but now she has GERD symptoms refractory to double dose PPI and an acid exposure time of 17.8% with a DEMISA score of 63.1. So we now proceed to transoral incisionless fundal plication. On retroflex view, patient shows a Hill 1 possible early one. anatomy. Yeah, I like that the best. That's the widest swing. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pull still back? 
into the device. So that's the transparent. Next will come gray. Next will come blue. Okay, right there. So once you're in the blue, I can open this up. So you land. Okay. So this is six o'clock. That's twelve o'clock. This is anterior. The other side is posterior. Okay. So this is. We found it. Is it okay? I walked over there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but, okay, so this is this is the posterior view when you follow me. There's another way to look at the posterior view, and that is you go opposite. So I want you I'm gonna stay here, you're gonna swing the other way. Swing, not the short thing. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to swing this way. You're going to swing the other way, actually. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep, keep going. Okay, so leave me on the other side now. Okay, stop. Okay. And then you start, stop right there. Okay, so I'm going to, and then rotate out. Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm going to see if I can tug that. Down. Let's come down decently. Yeah, a little bit more yet. Okay, that's pretty nice. They will you watch. Okay, follow me a little bit. Okay, stop there. I want you to uh, decently. A little bit. Right there, stop. Okay. Stay there. Alright, now I want you to swing the other way. Stay right there. And beat the place some more. Stay right there. Wait, wait. Swing out a little bit. Okay. Walk, walk, put your arm, shut out. Okay, now I want you to read the place. Swing about. And start re interface. And then rotate out of the corner a little bit. Push up the diaphragm a little bit. And fire board, flush enough. Rotate two. Push back and clear. Uh, posterior, 11 o'clock.
Thank you so much for your attention, and I welcome any comments or questions you may have.